Daisy Ridley, who plays Rey in the current ongoing Star Wars trilogy made up of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, has been placed in a challenging position in the current climate of Hollywood as she's had to traverse a climate of conflict as a female lead in arguably the biggest movie franchise in history. In this video, we'll explore how she's managed to avoid much controversy and what we can learn from her example about how to approach potentially sensitive subjects. What's interesting is that despite being in a delicate position of acting as a face for feminism in a series where the fandom is notorious, Daisy Ridley for the most part has come out of it unscathed. She has had some criticism to her objection to the term tomboy and whether or not she's had a privileged upbringing, which can be argued as naive or ignorant, but these pale in comparison to the backlash other actors have had following public remarks they made. A couple of examples include Brie Larson, who has been nothing short of a PR department's worst nightmare since taking up the role of Captain Marvel in the MCU, and recently Elizabeth Banks, who directed the latest Charlie's Angels reboot which flopped at the box office and managed to alienate half of her potential audience before the movie was even released. While Daisy Ridley isn't the only example of a female lead who has successfully navigated the current socio-cultural environment, she has faced arguably the most difficult challenge, knowing the history and importance of Star Wars. So how has the actress successfully managed to avoid many of the controversies that others have faced? Well, let's look at some of the factors that play a role. Number 1. Avoids alienating audiences it might seem obvious, but Daisy Ridley doesn't say much that might alienate her audience, focusing instead on the work that she does and letting it take centre stage. This is in stark contrast to others, as we previously mentioned Brie Larson and Elizabeth Banks as examples, both of which have had controversy follow them. In the case of Brie Larson, she has drawn a lot of controversy following a speech where she made remarks about 40 year old white dudes in the industry and press. Elizabeth Banks equally made a similar mistake, as she chose to target men in general before and after the release of Charlie's Angels, effectively laying the responsibility of the film's failure on agenda. Daisy Ridley simply doesn't do this. She doesn't target specific groups of people when commenting on films and audiences, but instead chooses to focus on the work as a creative piece, or the audience as a whole. Number 2. Talks of individuals and characters Similar to the previous point, Daisy Ridley focuses on individuals and characters when she speaks about them in the films that she starred in obviously most prominently Rey in Star Wars. At the time of creating this video, I'm yet to find an attempt to shift focus to something bigger and a more generalised social issue, such as feminism. When she speaks of a strong female character, it's talking about the individual character she plays, putting the emphasis on Rey rather than the role of women in society. This is fundamental when you talk about social and cultural issues, because no two individuals are the same, and to shift focus away from the individuals often leads to blanket statements that will often inadvertently lead to people feeling attacked. A good example was the controversial advert from Gillette back in January 2019, and effectively generalised men and masculine behaviour that led to an intense backlash. Number 3 doesn't focus on agendas. Relating to the previous point, when Daisy Ridley speaks about the film that she starred in, she lets the work take priority, of which the byproduct might be a greater socio-cultural insight. She doesn't actively seek to promote Rey as an icon for feminism, but the character has been adopted as a symbol for feminism today. Again. This starkly contrasts how Brie Larson approached playing Captain Marvel, where she has made clear that she effectively feels that the role and her place in the MCU is a platform to push her own agenda. The fact is, most people naturally find this a point of conflict, as people don't like to feel that they should be told how to think, but rather want the freedom to formulate their own opinions. Getting back to Daisy Ridley, 
We see this in this panel where she's being asked about the roles of women in films, as she chooses to actively focus on the characters in the story, moving away from topics such as gender, whereas others immediately shift focus to feminist ideology, which has led to greater criticism. But the response was so beyond anything I could have imagined that I'm still like, it, it was only afterwards that I was like, oh, oh yeah. It, and it's not like I ever took it for granted or anything, but it was just so monumental, um, the response and how people felt about it. And obviously that's a testament to Kathy, JJ, Michael, Larry, everyone who created the characters in the beginning. And I think what's great about everyone is it's not like she's a girl, this is a guy, this is anything. Everyone's just, it's just great characters that happily are falling into broader categories now. So I'm thrilled. I feel like from the beginning, um, when I initially found out I got this role, I just felt like I wanted to do the whole thing justice. Um, and uh, I'm so excited that, guys, the girls in this movie kick some butt. Every single one is so good. And um, I can't wait for everyone to see it. I just want to pay tribute to Ryan uh, for being one of the most brilliantly subversive filmmakers I've ever been able to bear witness to. And in the case of um, the look of my character, I was moved by the fact that he really wanted her strength to first lead with a very uh, deep femininity mm. and to see a, fe a powerful female character also be feminine um, is something that uh, moves away from a stereotype that's sometimes perceived in strong female characters must be like the boys. As a guy, I'd like to say that for me, the most formative people in my life have been women. And, and so that has shaped my destiny, destiny so much. And so to see that reflected in the film is really, really a beautiful thing. And, so, and it, does, it is more true to real life and, and what's happening now, but what's always happened, which is, you know, it's, they're, they're the ones, you know, that... Number four maintains focus on her individuality. It's from the previous points that we learn more about why Daisy Ridley really isn't criticised too much as an individual, even if many fans take issue with her character of Rey. For example, when she's often asked about the future of her career, she focuses on her craft, her work as an actor, and doesn't forcibly try to push her role to be something bigger, such as an icon for feminism. This is often the case of many who have achieved success and become icons later in life. Their primary focus is on working towards something that's of personal great importance to them. They often achieve iconic status at the point of gaining acknowledgement for that work, which inspires others to follow them. Again, this is in contrast to what Brie Larson has done who seems to view her role as an actor as a platform to get a public eye and push feminism to a mass audience, rather than focusing on her work as an actor first, where she leads by example. The key lesson here is if you want to be an authority on a particular subject, it's important to be an example first, showing others that there's substance and weight to your words. Number 5. Focuses on the group while Daisy Ridley has consistently focused on the individual when talking, she equally acknowledges the group as well when called on to do so, stating it as being what she loved about Star Wars and what motivated her to do Murder on the Orient Express. When talking about Star Wars, she doesn't take all of the credit or act on her role as the hero, but instead shares credit with the others in the film talking about the other characters, regardless of gender, race or other sensitive issues. Brie Larson again failed in this regard, as she infamously had poor interviews in marketing Avengers Endgame, feeling the need to state Captain Marvel as the most powerful superhero in the MCU, immediately being rejected by co-star Chris Hemsworth in what could only be described as an uncomfortable interview. And this really sums up a critical point about Daisy Ridley, and how to go about tackling controversial subjects in a way that's productive and positive. Empower others with your statements. Let's take the role of feminism as an example. 
a subject that's extremely controversial today, and fundamental to the roles the actors mentioned in this video play. When people choose to actively make it a point of conflict, such as a men versus women debate, the subject evolves into something akin to a petty spat. Instead, when people choose to acknowledge the roles others can play, and how they are of value, they will be much more likely to reciprocate the feelings. As the famous saying goes, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Are you looking forward to the rise of Skywalker? Let me know in the comments section below. Please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.